the last few months, you've had this feeling that things are out of place. Everything's just not quite real. Little things too, like a coffee cup on a table or the mailbox at the end of your street. And then one day you realize you're surrounded by props. Everything feels unreal because it is unreal. You've been unwittingly living your life on a TV studio as the star of a reality show that you are completely unaware of. So now you start trying to probe without drawing suspicion. You dissect conversations with coworkers and loved ones and realize they're paid actors. They audition for their role and they practice their lines when you're not in the room. You parse every word of the news and you realize it is carefully scripted and acted to produce an emotional reaction specifically from you. The attacks on 9-11 never happened. They were a tragic plot in a special episode of this TV show that you star in. And if you could somehow make it to New York, you could see the Twin Towers still standing and you would prove your suspicions. This is the real life experience of a man named Albert. For five years, he lived in this reality, gradually questioning and confirming his suspicions over time. He ultimately drove to New York City to check on the Twin Towers himself in person. And once he got to the city, though, he changed his plans. He never went to ground zero. He wound up in front of the UN headquarters and decided he would ask for asylum from this TV show political asylum to protect himself from this fabricated world that was constructed around it. When the security guard tried to stop him, he swung at the security guard and a full-on fight ensued. Of course, Albert was arrested and then taken to Bellevue Hospital, where he became one of the first documented cases of what we now call Truman Show delusion. It gets its name from The Truman Show, this movie that came out back in 1998, starred Jim Carrey, and it followed exactly this plot. Truman is adopted by a TV company as an infant and is unknowingly raised on a TV set, surrounded by cameras 24-7 for his entire life. Every relationship, every event in his life is carefully scripted, directed, and acted by people around him. Shortly after the movie came out, people started presenting with delusional symptoms that were pretty much identical to the plot of the film. Now, this is not its own distinct condition or diagnosis. It's really just a way that an existing delusion, probably delusion of control, can manifest. Now, this delusion of control has been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's sometimes seen in schizophrenia patients. And when it comes to a delusion of control, people believe that everything about their life, every minute, second of their life is scripted and controlled by some larger power, some person or group of people that are pulling the strings behind the scenes. Now, the way that this delusion manifests, the details seem to depend on the culture, the time period you live in. Like if you lived in the 80s in Russia, you might think it was the KGB pulling all these strings. If you lived in Italy in the 1700s, you might think it was the Vatican that was constructing this massive conspiracy around your life. But for individuals born in the era of screens and TV stars, it might manifest as a TV producer and a sea of adoring fans. It's all the same delusion. The details just happen to manifest differently depending on the environment that person lives in. And we don't fully understand what's driving these delusions, but one theory revolves around the role of dopamine, a neurotransmitter, in our perception of the world around us. There's some evidence that dopamine levels in a subcortical structure of our brain called the striatum influence the saliency of details in our environment. So this is how much they stand out. Like for example, usually the things around you that are pretty mundane, you filter out, you pass right over. Things like a coffee cup or a mailbox at the end of your street, you glance at them, you never quite register them and you go about your business because they're not particularly relevant details to whatever you're doing. But in people with higher than normal dopamine levels in their striatum, these objects might seem to stand out for some reason. They may not be filtered appropriately. And they can't quite put their finger on why they stand out, why they're so noticeable. Something seems different. Something seems off about them, but you can't quite scratch the itch and explain what it is. Eventually, 
they might feel detached from their entire environment, like the world they live in is not real. And at this point, your brain starts searching for an explanation. Given the prevalence of reality TV in our culture, it shouldn't be surprising that some people's brains latch onto this as a possible theory to explain what they're experiencing. So imagine yourself in this situation. What would you do? How would you test your theory? You couldn't confide in a therapist or a friend. They'd be paid actors. Couldn't go to the police. Bad actors. Maybe you could try to escape, buy a last minute ticket on a plane to Paris. But how do you know that plane they load you onto isn't just a movie set loaded with TV screens in the windows projecting a flight to Paris while the plane itself just circles around LAX for 10 hours and eventually lands at another TV studio, this time made up to look like France. Even this very video could have been planted in your YouTube feed because the producers thought you might be catching on and they wanted to make you second guess yourself. See, this is the mind bending trap that delusions like this can catch you in. It seems that most documented patients ultimately recover with a combination of therapy and psychiatric medication, but it's something that often comes with a schizophrenia spectrum diagnosis. So a lot of the time they're grappling with this for years or even the rest of their lives. Now it's incredibly rare and very new. This is something that is unique to the current modern reality TV cameras everywhere environment that we're starting to emerge into as a culture. But it's a fascinating example of the way that things like delusions and paranoia, which have been around forever, can change in the way they present based on the environment that the subject happens to be living in. It's also a testament to how powerful our mind is. Oftentimes we forget that our conscious selves are not directly experiencing the reality around us. There are a lot of subconscious layers that process incoming information and manipulate it into a picture of the world before it ever gets to our conscious experience. What we experience as reality is not reality. It is a projection that our deeper brain chooses to feed to us to represent the reality we're embedded in. Normally, it's a close enough match to the actual world. We don't notice that. But in cases like this, it shows how reliant we are on this narrative that our brain gives us. That's it for this video. This is a super small channel, right? So if you feel like making my day, like the video or subscribe or leave a comment uh, and I'll respond. If you have any ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear them. Uh, if you have any thoughts about this video or questions about Truman Show Delusion, let me know. I'll answer it. Thanks for watching and have an excellent rest of your day.